Hey everybody, welcome to Obscurities and Miniatures, and yay! This guy was supposed to come a few days ago, but thanks to all these wonderful storms that we've been having all across the United States, uh, the weather has not been cooperative, but thankfully the mail, as always, must persevere and come through, and that it did. So today we've got Ajax Gorgoth, Lord of the Fist! Goliath House Agent. So, listen to that sound. That's the sound of chunky pieces. Oh my god, look at all this stuff in here. This is just one dude. Oh, that's not good when we see chains floating around. Yikes. Uh, there's a lot of stuff in here, which is fantastic for me. As much as I love the 3D printing stuff, sometimes the fits are a bit hit and miss. And I do appreciate the fact that the care and work that goes into a nice, solid resin model. Huh. It's something I can always appreciate. Had a lot of fun with the previous one I had. Gorshiv Hammerfist, if I remember his name correctly. Came out decent, I guess? And we'll see how his compatriot here. Whereas this guy is an outlaw model, I believe. Or a bounty hunter type. Our friend here is full on Goliath, even though that guy's totally Goliath too. So, give me a sec, let's get it popped open, and we'll see all of his pieces. You know, one of the things I hate about these is the fact that I always end up chopping everything up, trying to get the package open, and, you know, GW got a GW. Give us these nice, cheap leaflets with the rules attached. I don't even know how many credits you are. Cool, that's okay. All right, let's start taking a look. What do we got here? Good God, am I gonna have to put every individual chain onto his cape? Lord, I hope not. 40 millimeter base. Torso. Torso. Hmm, 2023. We're future proofing ourselves here. Oh wait, it is 2023, isn't it? Whoa, what happened there? Camera just went like crazy shifting. I don't know what caused that. A leg. What is going on with the color? That is weird. Okay, I don't know if it's showing up on the video, but like the whole background color changed and I haven't changed my lighting or anything. Nothing is different. Strange. Chunks of chain, and it did it again. That's gonna be the cape. Maybe I just need to have this in front of me so you don't do that anymore on me. We just did it again. This other leg, heavily armored, I might add. I wonder how big he's gonna be in comparison to another Goliath. Look at that, why, why is this a part? It's like a shell casing or something. And a bit of a buzz saw. More armor plating for his torso. More of that cape thing. Stuff that came off, the sprues. His head, look at the magnificence of that mohawk of his. Ready to rip and tear until it is done. Big old power fist. It's got a weird attachment point. I was going to say that might be a, a good conversion fodder piece, but I don't know the kind of people that use this stuff for conversions. You think it's too hardcore for me. Backpack, handle of the sword. Where is the sword? There's the sword. That's weird. Oh, okay. Remember I was complaining about the weird chainsaw bit? That's because that's gonna attach to the blade. I got it, okay. More cape. At least that's going to be easy to paint. Ooh, and delicate little chains. More cape. Delicate little chains part two. My beautifully manicured fingernails. Ooh. So there's a lot going on here. Besides my camera self-adjusting for whatever bizarre reason. Whether it's going to be as much... Intensive work as trying to get all of Gorshev's things in alignment remains to be seen. 
but I don't know about you guys. I am absolutely looking forward to seeing how he turns out. Looking forward to getting it built. And if you know me, there's probably a good chance that I'm going to try to get this all painted up in the very near future. So sit tight. Let me put it together, and we'll see how it turns out. Whoosh! All right. Ajax is all put together here. And for the most part, uh, he was not too much of an issue. For the most part. So there were a couple of spots that proved to be a bit more troublesome than I would have hoped. And I guess that's glue that's dry. I don't know what that is on his head. You don't want to stay on the base either. Fair enough. I don't have him glued, obviously. I mean, he, he's he got some pretty good width to this guy. You know, there's a lot of mass here. And even GW Forge World had to point out that that is one of the most impressive mohawks we have seen on the tabletop so far. So, when I said for the most part things went smoothly, uh, the first thing that was an issue was the fact that the instructions don't actually tell you everything that needs to be attached. For example, uh, this set of pipes that goes on the back of that power fist. Uh, well, there's no instructions on how to put the power fist on in the first place, and so I kind of just goofed around, and I had to go check the Forge World website to figure out exactly uh, where those were supposed to go. I had no idea. The other issue was that things did not want to line up smoothly on the arms. I did the best that I could. And there was a majorly noticeable gap on his left one here. And so I cheated. I could not get this bit of his cape thing to attach. So I thought, you know what? I have no idea where it's supposed to go. It's not cooperating with me. Why not just attach it there, follow the general movement of the cape, and I think it's going to be fine. If I hadn't mentioned that, you know, I don't think most people would notice uh, there was, I think, this piece right here that is near the sword was actually supposed to attach somewhere over here near his shoulder. Uh, you can see things did not fit precisely, if that's even where they're supposed to go. Uh, everything just kind of mushed together on his back. Same kind of issue I had with Gorshev. Um, you know, like, I don't know this section of the cape right next to the sword. Uh, I'm not 100% sure if that's where exactly it's supposed to go, but for the most part, it works. And again, maybe yours is better. And I thought I was very careful in terms of, you know, cleaning everything, getting everything prepped, uh, but maybe I wasn't. So how does it look in comparison to some of the other Goliath models? That was my first thought. Now, funny thing, sad thing, is I have a fully painted Goliath gang. I mean, extensive. I'd say I think I did at least a box and a half. All the guys in the starter set. I think I picked up a second sprue just to mess around with. And then I believe, well, I got zoomed in. I did the second box set with the Juve guys with the buzzsaws and the big old, you know, roided out guys. And I can't find any of those. I've been looking and I just got frustrated and finally said, screw it, let's just go ahead and put him up as is. He should be the star and not his buddies. So you can see, I mean, to me this is more of a basic generic Goliath and there is definitely some height and girth advantage there. The boss one, I guess... Not as much, but again, he's got the mass going for him. I mean, he's on that 40 millimeter base. I think it's a 40. Maybe I put him on a 32 and I didn't even realize it. And now I'm scanning the table looking for a 40 millimeter base because that's what he should have had. That's okay. Grabbing his buddy Gorshiv here. Now Gorshiv's kind of cheating and he is actually on, you know, that... Ooh. I just wanted to focus. There we go. Gorshiv is on a scenic base there. Whereas Ajax is not. 
but size, width, mass, I'd say they're pretty comparable. Obviously, the base and hammers for Gorshiv there take up a little bit more space, and I guess that's reflected in the price. He's actually a bit pricier than Ajax here. I was kind of surprised about that. We're having another of the resin forge world necromunda kits the master of the eightfold path he is a little bit taller a little bit gaunter a little bit leaner but you know i mean that's kind of the style of the corpse grinders anyway how long ago did i paint him yeah, it's set for as extensive of painted necromunda collection i have and i've got it i've got just about you know a nice skirmish force for every single gang at this point both with the regular and expansion boxes i have yet to use any of this in an actual necromunda game use them in plenty of other things but necromunda itself nope <laughs> kind of sad on the other hand though of all of the modern GW kits, to me, the Necromunda stuff is the most system agnostic, easily adaptable. You know, there's no major iconography on any of these figures for the most part. You could throw them into just about any game, any faction, and I think they're going to work really great. I mean, just his junky 80s punk rock, you know, Mad Max post-apocalyptic aesthetic... Have him be some kind of a local warlord if you're doing something like uh, scrappers, you know. This is not a test. I think there's plenty of games where this look he's got rocking would work fantastic. I really do. You know, that's just a massive, massive sword. I like the rules that you have to roll to see if he's even willing to, to help out your gang. Because there's a good chance he might not. He feels like you could just fight your own fights. Someday I am going to get a resin berserker or whatever the chemfist brutes or whatever they're called. This is actually an Artel W sculpt, which is quite nice. But I like the crazy slain warp spasmish proportions of the GW kit as well. And you know you can never have enough roided out, you know drug addled pill popping juiced up machine men smashing through walls and your opponents so yeah i promise these will not be the last of the forge world stuff that we see as i've said i found my uh kill fist guy so we'll have him up soon and if he's not already available in video format on here and we will definitely be seeing some of the other outlaw figures as they trickle out. And I can uh, justify making another hefty purchase to Forge World. But at least, you know, I, I feel like if I'm going to spend the money on something like that, I want to get a kit that I really enjoy. And I really, really like this guy's look. I don't know what's going on with, like, Flash or something on his forehead. And I can see only on the camera. I can't see it in person very well there. Oh, maybe it's like a stitch. I think maybe he's actually supposed to have his head stitched up there and it's not just flash. It would not surprise me. Just those fun little details like that. You know, and what's crazy is for the most part everything underneath that cape is actually sculpted as well. Not that you're going to know it or see it. So, have fun with that if you're in the mood to try converting and chopping a guy like this up, I think there is definitely some potential. That's sort of his alone. I wish the pieces fit a little bit better. The tip of the blade, like I said, I couldn't figure out what that was for at first, but yeah, that's where it goes with the two separate buzzsaw blades on both ends. Fun stuff. Anyway, I am looking forward to getting him painted, so I'm going to stop talking so I can go get him primed. And hopefully within the next few weeks, definitely at least within the month that this is getting posted, we will see him painted and joining his buddy Gorshiv here. And hopefully we'll be seeing some more lovely sculpts for Necromunda post-haste. So, with that said, 
This has been High Lord Tamberlane with Obscurities and Miniatures. Saying thanks for watching, and we will see you back here soon. Bye bye.